Okay, I always get a little more excited <clears throat> when I'm able to make uh, kind of a contact, I guess you could say, with my old photography days. And this one's going to be kind of like that because we're going to be working on the edges of photos uh, and and the reason why it takes me back to my photography college days is because uh, especially grad students like to go in and file negative carriers and get those crazy edges so it would make some of their photos even more unique because they would get those artistic looking edges so they would kind of grind on the negative carriers so the edges would be uh, more black and jaggedy around around them so <clears throat> people are always looking for ways to make their images unique and that's what we're going to work on today so let's get started um, this image hopefully you downloaded it already and uh, it comes at a funky size because I have to uh, kind of force uh, Google to uh, store these things larger than uh, they want to and so you can have a little higher resolution image to work on so when I open this up it's <laughs> shows it at 240 but it's only by two by three inches or almost three by four inches so let's go ahead and have photoshop manufacture some pixels for us uh, <clears throat> let's make this like a um, seven inch let's go to the very top and have that changed into roughly a five by seven and go down here and check resample uh, preserve details for enlargement and let it work its magic. I have my reduced noise sit around a 9 or a 10. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't have to have anything at all. I, please excuse me for the clearing of my throat. Uh, I've got a thing going on and I'll try to keep that to a minimum and I'm just going to click OK and let Photoshop do its thing. It really does a nice job generally speaking and uh, now I have this in a higher resolution on my computer, but I wanted to do that to keep, you know, the image the same as you guys. So I downloaded this after uh, Google stored it so I could have the same image to work on. Because we're going to do some things with it. There's a little uh, crazy squibby thing here that uh, the filter did. This is the oil filter that was in a previous Photoshop. Unfortunately, we don't have that anymore, and I really like this. And uh, we don't have that anymore, and that's unfortunate. But it, the eye's kind of drawn to that because it went white. So you might want to get rid of that. It's it's not a big deal, but if it bothers you, get rid of it. That's not part of this lesson, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, we're going to uh, create some canvas though so that we can work. That's kind of the primary thing to get this image off the ground. So let's make this smaller. Hold down the control or the command key on your computer. If it's a Mac it would be command and then hit the minus key to make this a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do is crop this because it does have that little a funky size to it now that five and a quarter let's just go ahead and and make it a five by seven so let's hit the crop tool and change this to width seven and five and if yours doesn't say inches put that in there and <clears throat> we can put it at 300 or go with the 240 that's in there which is what I'm going to do and then you have the choice uh, to move this either up or down. Uh, I find this to be more interesting at the bottom than at the top. So I just moved it accordingly. And I'm going to just hit enter or uh, double click inside the image to complete that uh, crop. <clears throat> and now I'm going to create additional canvas space. Now, obviously, we can do that with the crop tool. We can make things larger, uh, but I'm going to do it with the 
uh, canvas size because I'm going to very specifically uh, create an inch all the way around. So I'm going to change this to 8 and this to 6. And if you want to make this, uh, go ahead and make this a uh, like an 8 by 10. You can certainly do that. We could just go ahead and make this a 10 by 8. And so we have all this extra space. And the, and the nice thing is, if we want to, and, and that's actually what I'm going to do, uh, because now we have a traditional size that we can print out, uh, I'm going to do a marquee selection here, rectangular marquee, and I'm going to click and just select the image itself and do a control J. And that puts it on its own layer right here. We've now got the image on layer one. And I'm going to fill the background layer with white. So I'm, I'm going to hit D to get the two uh, colors, black and white. And I'm going to fill the background with white. And the controls for doing that, the control keys, uh, so I don't have to go up and use the uh, menus anywhere. I can just hold down my control key command key on a Mac and hit backspace and it fills the background layer with white so now we have the image on a nice white background now what I want to do is put nice edges on this image to make it look look more artistic so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is put a mask and the reason why I'm going to put a mask is because I want to be able to do things to this and quickly undo them if I don't like them. And so I'm going to just go down here to what I refer to as the square donut. It's the square with the hole in it. That's the mask. Just click it and we get this nice box with white in it. <clears throat> and of course with black on top if we paint in this box it will hide and if we paint with white it'll undo that so right now if I turn on a brush and let's get a nice big uh, well, let's see I don't really have a nice brush let's uh, let me click here and and just go to assorted brushes and I'm gonna append those and uh, I still don't see a brush that I really want to use let me try again here uh, reset brushes. Now we'll just click one of these brushes and I'm going to paint with black right on this mask over here in the layers and 100% and just paint right through here. And you can see it's like it erased that data, but it didn't. If you look over here, it painted with black through here. Now if I turn around and switch from black to white by hitting this little double arrow or I can hit X on the keyboard which toggles black and white I can paint and paint or just go like this and it hides that back all over again and so you see once I clear that all off and if I switch back to black and switch back to white and if I get a bigger brush I can do it really fast <clears throat> so you see where this is like a magic eraser you erase and then you unerase but you're only hiding and revealing with a mask so that's the beauty of using a mask on a layer so you can make things blend and and so forth so we're going to use masks a lot this summer and uh, so hopefully you can get very comfortable with it very quickly so I'm gonna switch back to black or press the letter X to switch back and forth again and I'm going to go up here to the brushes and you see I've got a crazy variety of brushes up here. And if you go to this little gear, here's where all of the brushes 
reside. So we can have all kinds of interesting brushes. And I can just say reset the brushes and uh, let me actually go in here and uh, replace brushes. And, and then I can load, if I had a set of brushes somewhere on my computer, I could load them from there. I'm going to cancel that. Um, if I want to paint, I can go down here and find dry media brushes. I have special effect brushes. I've got wet media brushes for other painting jobs. Uh, so there's all kinds of things uh, that are in here. I'm going to put basic brushes in. Actually, I, let me do that again. Basic brushes, OK. Let me do that again. There. I didn't need to save any of the others. Uh, so here are basically what you would start out with. These are the very, very basic, basic brushes, and, and that's all uh, that a lot of people will ever use in Photoshop for whatever reason. And these are the hard brushes. As you see here, we have uh, a kind of a thick brush. It gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And these are the softer brushes. And if we click one of these softer brushes, you see the size reduces, and the hardness is all the way to the left, which means the hardness is basically off. It says 0%. And if we click on one of these brushes, you see the hardness went all the way to the right, which means it's very hard. The edges are very, very hard. So for this particular exercise, uh, one of these brushes is, is going to be meaningless because if we go out to our image and we paint on these edges, you see it really doesn't add anything artistic. It's just a very hard edge. So I'm going to do Control Z and get rid of that. So we need to load, click on that, and load some brushes that are a little more artistic, so, shall we say. So there's all kinds of things in here that we can uh, work with. We have special effects. And if you want to add brushes, to your set of brushes over here, you append. If you click OK, it simply replaces these brushes with a new set of brushes. So if you append, it will add these brushes to what you already have. So here are the special effects brushes. You can see uh, <clears throat> there are several different ones here. And you can keep adding as you go the dry media brushes. wet media brushes, thick heavy brushes, uh, round brushes with size, just all kinds of assorted brushes. So you see there's lots of stuff in here to choose from. And, and we can work with so many to do what we're going to do in this particular lesson. So I'm just going to start out with something. Um, let's start off with this one. This one's very exaggerated. So we'll start off here as an example. And we'll just uh, come over here to this folder next because this is the area that lets us really get particular with the brush. Okay, now we see what the brush is actually going to look like. If you move into the area of the image, I'm I'm using my I'm using my uh, right bracket key to make the brush larger. So you see what the brush if I click once, there's what the brush looks like. And that's not going to look that pretty going down the edge either, right? It has a pattern to it and it really doesn't look that great. But the magic is right here on this side. So we click first on Shape Dynamics to get that activated. Then we click right on the words Shape Dynamics and then you start seeing where we can definitely make a difference. Size Jitter. Watch what happens when I move Size Jitter. And 
this is all trial and error. But you're going to see immediately how this changes a little bit. All right. You see some different sizes in there already. Some of these are a little longer than others. See it? So now, some differences. Then the angle. You see what's happening in the preview. You see now the brush is turned and as we go it keeps turning. If I click once and I move down and I keep clicking you see the brush actually turn. Alright, let's undo. Then we come down to roundness. You probably can't see it as clearly, but it is also changing. Then we come down to scattering, and we come over here to adjust that. Watch the preview. So it widens out the area that's affected by the brush. Now I think you can see our edges are going to look quite different based on this. Now the number of heads that are going to be affected. Sometimes too many can be hazardous to your health. And then the count jitter. That means how many are going to happen at a time is going to also vary. So let's do a, I'm just going to do a control A, which selects everything. If you look over under the layers palette, it selects everything on the screen, on this layer, which Right now we only have this mask selected, so if I hit backspace, the only thing it's going to delete is what we've painted in that mask. So that means we can just keep painting, 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 and experimenting. We hit delete every time, and all it does is get rid of our experimentation. All right, so if I click and go down the side, we say, well, that's interesting, and then I can hit delete. Now, here's the other thing. I'm going to get rid of this for a few minutes. We have to decide uh, how much of the brush do we cut into the image. So we, we can say halfway. We can just say right on the edge. Well, again, it's a matter of experimenting. We just have to try and see where it belongs. But the main thing is we have to be consistent and it's easier to do that if we don't click and try to drag it like this. Control Z or just hit backspace. What we need to do instead is click once up here, come down to the bottom and then shift click and it'll automatically draw it for us or paint it. Go back to the top and shift click again because we don't want that straight line still to show. So let's click down here once, go over here and shift click and we see a little bit of telltale sign of that straight line so let's go back over here, shift click, back here, shift click, straight line's gone and let's click down here once, go up here, shift click and we can get a little bit closer, click Come down here, shift click. You need to dig in a little bit more, it looks like. Click, shift click. Click, shift click. See it? The brush back end is right here. The brush front end is here. So you get a different thing happening on this side than you do here. And you're going to get a different look here than you do at the top. So we hold the brush right here, shift click down here, click here, shift click here. Now let's do an F and F again just so we can see what our edges look like and fettered so to speak. It's not bad. It's got a nice artistic look to it. Let's see if I can do a control plus to get it a little bit bigger. 
Yeah. Can't see it down here at the bottom. It's kind of cut off your viewing area. But interesting. All right, F again. So that's one brush. That's just one brush. Let's hit backspace. Gets rid of all of it. So we're not stuck with, with that, even though we actually finished that Im image and had our artistic look. One click of the keyboard and it's all gone. So let's go back up to the brushes again and let's see what other brush we can try. How about one of these crusty looking this is a plastic wrap and usually you think it says plastic I get sick to my stomach but let's try it. I, I have never used it to be honest with you but look what it looks like. So Let's go to Shape Dynamics, keeping an eye on our little preview. Let's scatter it. Diameter, let's move the diameter way up. Angle Jitter, let's go crazy with it. I want it to get just as crazy looking. Yeah, roundness is kind of hurting it. Let's go to Scattering. There's the trick. And count jitter. And you can experiment also with these others. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to help or hurt. I don't know. There's a lot of these that I have not experimented with. I'm going to leave texture off for now because I want those little edges in there, I believe. I don't know if I want smoothing or not. Let's just see what we get. Now this is a small brush right now, so let's let's make it a little bit bigger. And you can see what it's going to do. Let's try making it bigger. Oh, took a big bite. Let's run it out further. I'm going to click there, come down here and shift click. Come up here, click, shift click. That really came way down in the image. Let's try it again up here. Click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Let's go down here, click, shift click. That came way up. Now that's, let's, let's hit backspace. Let's go back to here and let's go to scattering. And maybe we want to bring that stuff back under control a little bit. Uh, I think that's going to make a big difference. Yeah. And then we can click there and shift click down here. Click up here. Shift click. Shift click. And, and we could make this. Let's hit backspace again. Let's make this smaller. Make the brush smaller. Left bracket key. And let's try that again. Yeah, I think that's going to work a lot better at that size. Let's go down here and click, shift click, click, shift click, and click here, shift click up here. Yeah, I think that's a lot more interesting. Let's do a uh, F, F. <clears throat> That's not bad. I think it makes a nice, interesting looking image. So let's do an F again. And uh, I, I like the way that looks. All right, let's see uh, what we can do with a different brush. Let's, uh, let's try. the dots. Now this is a little closer perhaps to some of the effects that they got with filing of the uh, file of the negative carrier. So let's go over here and <clears throat> you see right now it just looks like some lines. So let's go shape dy uh, dynamics and diameter we can really mess with that. Ooh. 
Now, if you have a pen, a graphics tablet, you can mess with all kinds of things here. We can still do fade, which can make some grounginess, but um, if you have a pen, you can really do a lot more because you see with pen pressure and pen, pen tilt, you can really change things. And we can do a little, a uh, few changes. And let's go down to scattering. Now we're cooking. Not too much because we want to see some of that separation in there, I think. Now let's see what we get. Now we didn't undo that, so let's just hit backspace. And let's make our brush bigger, right bracket key. Let's see what happens here. We click there and we go down here and shift click. And then we click here and shift click. Oops, that wasn't good. Control Alt Shift. Command Alt Shift on Mac. Let's try that one more time there. Shift clicked. Click here. Shift click down there. Click. Shift click. That's interesting too. If we make it bigger, obviously we got to get back a little bit. That's too much. Control Alt Z. Let's back down a little bit. Left bracket key. Sometimes I like to just click in there a little bit. That went too far. So I control Z a couple of times. Get that back. Control Z. When we click there, we turned it. So we can click here and there. So every time we click, the brush is rotating. So you got to remember that. So it's different, right? It's a little different, unique. And let's hit backspace. And let me uh, let me see here. I have no idea what this might look like. Let's try this one. Let's go back to Shape Dynamics. Angle Jitter. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. Like that. And we can flip X and Y. That can make it interesting. Uh, scattering. That smoothed it out too much. Yeah, let's see what this does. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see what what that does. Okay. All right. Click. Shift click. Let's do that shift click again here. Yeah, let's click here. Shift click. Click here. Shift click. Went a bit too far in. I'm liking the the look of it though. It's got a nice edge effect to it. So all of these can have uh, a nice little effect. And, it, and if it's got a little bit too much still right there, you can just kind of paint with it where it's got a little bit too much stuff. Just paint a little bit. See it spin? See, you know, it makes it a little more difficult maybe to control it. But that can be artistic as well. I, I really like the, the effect that that one has. So you too, you know, experiment with, and obviously, uh, now that you've seen that done, experiment with your own images. And as a final uh, to this, I would uh, say, okay, now <clears throat> we don't need all this white space, right? So what if we go over here to the rulers and we say, you yeah, we need maybe a, uh, an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch of white space. Or maybe you only want a half inch of white space. Your call. Let's, let's say we want around uh, three quarters of an inch. So we click from each spot 
and bring out uh, a guide to give it three quarters of an inch, or I'm sorry, yes, three quarters of an inch is what I said. And then we control T that layer and we can, whoa. Let me make this a little bit smaller so I can see what I'm grabbing here. I had those marching ants on so it did not work exactly as I hoped. Control Z that. Turn the marching ants off. Control D. So now I'm going to do the Control T again. So fun trying to remember every little thing. I don't think I got that guide in exactly the right place. So I'm going to drag that down a little bit. I'm going to turn those guides off. And now. A lot nicer. Got those great edges going around. They're highlighted and uh, I think it's got a really cool artistic look to it. Hmm, what else could it possibly need? Oh. What if we put uh, what if we put this on there? A little SIGI file right down there. I think that works. Okay, one other thing maybe. Here's something that is very special to me. This is my granddaughter. Uh, she just graduated from kindergarten, so obviously this isn't a brand new picture. But this is a very special picture I took several years ago. And here's a heart. This is the same technique that, uh, that uh, we've been using. And... Uh, I just wanted to show you this real quick, and I'm going to show you how I got here. So I got the marching ants around the mask, and I'm going to start, and, and I've got, let me show you what I've got here. Here's scattering is the only thing that's set up, and you can see it's kind of crazy here. Uh, the scattering is all the way up to 280%, count is 2, jitter is 11. Uh, shape da dynamics is not even turned on. Nothing else is turned on here. Let me show you what happens. <laughs> I'm going to set this heart. You see the size. Um, we click up here. It's on 175 pixels. I'm going to set it clear up here. Click once. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to shift click. I'm going to go all the way over. I'm, I'm not clicking. I'm going to go all the way over here and shift click again. I'm going to go all the way up here to the top and shift click again. That's only the scattering that it's picking up. And then I'm going to go all the way over here and shift click again. Now if you want more to go into the picture than that, I'm going to hit backspace again. Then we click here on the uh, folder, and we can scatter them more. So up here again, I'm going to click once, come down here, shift click. I'm going to go all the way over here, shift click. Come all the way up here, shift click, all the way over here, shift click. And I think you'll see that gives us a pretty special image uh, for a valentine card or whatever now there's plenty of other things that we can make into edge uh, ideas but let me show you how i came up with this particular brush all we have to do is go over to our little brushes over here and get the these are the shape tools 
And remember, these are vector shapes. Everything else in Photoshop, uh, our images are raster based. The only other thing that is vector based are the uh, text. When we create text, it's vector based. So we can do whatever we want with our text. It stays very, very crisp and clean. So do these. These are vector based. So um, what we do, we click on the custom shape tool and we go right up here. We got lots and lots of nice characters in here and if you don't see one you like you click right here and you download any one of these under nature uh, we've got several things so if I click to append remember if we click OK it'll replace what's in here now with what's in this particular folder so if I click append it adds to what's in there as far as nature goes so these are the nature ones so I chose to use the heart and uh, then I used it to, and there's the heart. So all I did was come over here and clicked to create the heart. Then I went up to Window, and I went down to Paths. And I just closed Paths because it was already open, so let me do that again. Paths, and what I did was click right here that loads the path as a selection now once you have it as a selection then you can go over here and select whatever red color you want and do an edit and fill it we're gonna let's put a new uh, layer over here let's do blank layer so let's fill that uh, by holding down the Alt key or Option key on the Mac and hitting the backspace, it fills it with that color. Now, it's not important that we fill it with a color. We just want the heart shape, right? So, but I like red hearts. So, you know, we're going to go up to Edit, and we're going to go down to Define Brush Preset, and you can just call it whatever you want. My special... Heart. Click OK. So now, close that, and we go back here and turn that off, and we'll get rid of all these marching ants. We'll we'll do the Control A, and I'll hit that. Now I'm going to go up and turn on the brush, and I'm going to go over here, and the last brush I loaded is going to be, see the pop-up, My Special Heart. It's the one I just created. So, come over here, <clears throat> and I don't have any of those presets, right? So it's just a smooth heart. So I do the Control-Alt-Z, or I can just hit Backspace because I've got it on a mask and it's all selected, control A. So we have the marching ant, so I hit backspace. So now I gotta click on this folder, go into shape dynamics, <clears throat> click on the word shape dynamics, and watch the hearts. Actually, I, I did scattering, didn't I? Yeah, we gotta do the scattering. Don't wanna go cr too crazy. We'll see what that does. Crazy. Let's let's see what that really takes them out there. Let's, I love being able to see, and then I just hit backspace. Well, maybe not. not yeah, let's see what. Oh, that's too way too many. Hit backspace again to clear that. I think that's that might work. Hit backspace. Let's click up here. Shift click down here. Uh, we need to scatter more, don't we? So backspace, click on the folder, and let's click that jitter, and that jitter. Let's try it again. Click up here, shift click down here, shift click here, shift click there, shift click there. There we go. We could do with less hearts, I guess. Hit backspace, click on this folder, 
Our count's down to one, so let's let's just turn the count jitter completely off, and maybe take the scattering up more. Let's try that. Shift click there, or sorry, just click there. Shift click down here. Shift click here. We've got the scattering too high, but you get the idea. It's still gorgeous. See her face. Hit backspace, click on the folder, scatter back down, maybe in there. So let's do the let's bring the jitter way up just for kicks. Kicks and grins. Alright. So click here. Shift click. Shift click. Shift click. We can get closer, can't we? So let's try it all over again. Let's come over to here. Click. Shift click. Shift click. Shift click. Shift click. So I would just really experiment and try different stuff out. Just different things to try to add to your images. Different shapes, for goodness sakes. Why not? It's not like you're going to hurt anything, is it? Uh, also, opacity is another thing that we can uh, mess with. The angle wouldn't hurt to change that. We don't really want to mess with uh, maybe diameter, size, jitter, different size parts wouldn't hurt. Uh, we can flip them around horizontally and vertically. Look at that. Already, we're going to get some, and we can make this bigger. So, <laughs> be creative. Have some fun with this. I, I, I think that you can really uh, do a number on your images with this. We can also go to the background layer. Uh, and change the colors over here. You can, you know, click and switch the background. We've got red already as a color. Uh, switch the background to a pink. Go back in here. Go to color dynamics and make sure that you go up here to the top and click apply per tip. Otherwise, when you go out here and click you're only going to see you see it doesn't change I click and I hold it down each time I click I get a different color and variations but I don't see it otherwise so let me hit delete if you click apply per tip now as you click and drag you see the variations in each stroke okay so what we need to do is hit backspace again let's drag this layer underneath so we're not painting on top of my granddaughter let's move this underneath <clears throat> make the brush a little bit bigger and you can go over it and over it until you get just the pattern you like. Now, you say, well, yeah, that's fine. We got all these hearts behind the image, but this looks no different than a regular photo, but hearts behind it. Okay, we go up to the layer with the photo on it, click on the square donut, the mask. It turns into our black and white by default. If not, hit the letter D, black on top, make your heart smaller and then click once shift click down here shift click over here shift click up here shift click over here and then do it again let's get rid of that straight line just keep going back and forth over it until you know you get rid of it 
<clears throat> and if you don't get rid of it, see it's replacing uh, is what it's doing. And what I'm going to do is go until I get a pretty good pattern, and I'm, I'm basically just painting it. Because it's no big deal. And then I'm going to just turn on a regular brush, nice and soft, and then come in here and I can actually make that bigger. And all we're doing, remember, is painting on that mask. And getting rid of that edge. Just get rid of that edge. We still have those nice heart shapes in there. And obviously we could make those hearts bigger that are there so if we want to do that we can we can make put those in there occasionally to really stand out And if we're not rotating, which it switched again, so we can, you know, click these things back on so we, we get that dynamic change again. And remember, by default, the spacing is going to have them a lot closer together, so you can really move those apart if you want to. Just kind of fill in where we want to. Put one in there. How cool is that? So we've got them, you know, on this layer. We've got them on this layer. And just for chuckles and grins, I went in there and put drop shadows on those layers. Yeah, so <laughs> again, just for the heck of it, just to see what it would look like. So you guys can, you know, experiment, have some fun, and... Uh, go crazy. I, I think that uh, that's the beauty of this stuff. Experimentation, have some fun. Uh, it doesn't have to be about hearts. You know, we've got so many different things under these uh, brushes and the uh, the vector tools. You know, all of these, they don't have to be hearts and stuff. They can be more playful. They can just, they can be Christmas ornaments. We've got uh, ornaments under here that that can be used uh, <clears throat> excuse me again uh, just so many wonderful things uh, bubbles tiles I don't even have any clue what the tiles look like not anything great uh, light bulbs picture frames film I haven't seen the film in ages let's open this up bigger so there's film so just come in and look at all the stuff that's in here. You want to have some fun with kids' photos? You can, you know, put these animals around the edges. There's some notes for music. Obviously, there's some ways to use that. I basically went in and said, clicked over here and said, all. And, you know, you've even got the American flag over here. Surely you could find something patriotic to use the American flag one on. But look at all the globe and yin-yang and car and flowers, leaves, uh, so many things. And if you uh, go out on the Internet and search for free vector graphics, there's tons of them. Uh, the imagination in Photoshop has always been the only limitation. And here's another example of that. So, here you go, gang. Something else for you to play with. Have a good time. I mean it.
have a good time. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.